Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Lucky Stars by Fantasia Yu. And this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter one. In exactly seven days time, the marriage between Princess Mora and Prince Fidge, hailing from the celestial body known as Zot, would be formally consecrated. The royal couple embarked upon their journey aboard a spacecraft RI-7, traversing the vast expanse of the galaxy until they reached the solar system in which Zot, the moon planet, orbited. The interior of the royal travel vessel was luxurious, with plush chairs arranged in an orderly fashion, providing ample space for the 15 passengers on board. Soft lighting illuminated the gleaming and metallic surfaces, which were adorned with intricate engravings and sparkling jewels. The passengers, who were all members of the royal court, chatted amongst themselves in hushed tones, their excitement palpable as they approached the moon planet Zot. That's their son, said Princess Pola, her younger and more spirited sibling. Shush, Pola, said Mora. That's very rude. Oh, well, it is. We don't judge a kingdom by the size of its son, said Mora. Well, I do. The two princesses were both dressed in elegant yet understated attire. Princess Mora wore a simple gown of shimmering silver with her long dark hair pulled back in a sleek bun. She had a regal bearing with a proud posture and a composed expression on her face. Princess Pola, on the other hand, was a bit more lively with a mischievous sparkle in her bright green eyes. She wore a dress of pale pink with her golden hair cascading over her shoulders in loose curls. Princess Mora kept her gaze fixed on the screen of her virtual communication goggles, awaiting two bits of information. First, she awaited word on her application to a prestigious school located in the distant bronze city on planet Gore. At the same time, she eagerly anticipated the opportunities to see the face of Prince Fidge, the man whom her kingdom had arranged for her to marry. Sis, you're obsessed, said Pola. There's no way the bronze city won't accept your application. You're a princess. That's precisely why I must find out as soon as possible, said Mora. If I decide to say yes to Prince Fidge, it would put me at ease knowing I'll be attending school halfway across the galaxy. He can't be so bad, can he? said Pola. Can he? <laughs> said Mora, lifting an eyebrow at Pola. Pola laughed because neither of them had an answer to that question. The royals of Zot they were going to visit had this sort of reputation for being strange. Some pe descriptions outright called them mole people. I I'm sure that's an exaggeration, said Pola. I'm glad you're having the time of your life about it, said Mora. Mom and Dad let you do anything. Perks of being second princess, said Pola. There's never any expectation with me. I guess in no time at all, I will be in the Bronze City as far away from Zod as possible. People will ask, wasn't she marrying that mole person? As they journeyed through the vast expanse of space aboard the royal travel vessel, a contingent of 12 space guards stood at the ready, each armed with a ray gun for protection against the potential attacks from moon pirates. The prospect of such a perilous encounter was always a possibility, and as a precautionary measure, the princesses had been equipped with emergency escape pods, which would launch them at light speed back toward home in the event of an emergency. Mora groaned, looking behind at these men with ray guns. There was no window in that ship, but if the Lady Crane, their accompanying chaperone, allowed it, the vast solar system sites could be seen through those windows. It's dangerous and frightening, Crane would say. What if you saw into the eyes of one of those nasty space spiders around these parts? It's lovely to view the beauties of space, said Mora. There is no reason they should withhold our view, you know. Space annoys me personally, said Pola. How close are we? This is taking forever. JC, the android lady with a head of curly black hair, burst into the room with a sudden jolt. She was a robot helper designed to assist the royal family in their daily tasks. As she entered the room, her body began to flash with a series of colorful lights that pulsed up and down her frame. It appeared as though she was experiencing some kind of malfunction, causing her movements to become erratic and her lights to spaz out. Despite all the craziness of J.C.'s actions, the princesses barely reacted to her. Still six hours, princess, said J.C. Do you want to watch a Zot television program? Pola and Mora looked at each other. Huh? I don't know what bizarre programs these moonfolk could produce, said Pola. I'm kind of curious. 
JC was made out of tin, and when her arms moved, it caused a very uncomfortable loud sound. Sometimes she was buzzing. She was vaguely, vaguely mechanical. Really, no noise she made was predictable, and they were always different. Occasionally, her words skipped or repeated. Worst bot ever, said Pola. She was with them since they were young, and they never bothered upgrading her. Durr, said JC. What's someone? Durr, 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 said JC. Would someone shut her up? JC handed Pola a cup of orange juice. Drink? Pola sat backward in her seat. What are we going to do all week? Said Pola, sipping from the juice. It's going to be so boring. It's not boring, just different, said Mora. As I understand it, there's 12 alliances happening this month with the nexus of planets. Zot just happens to be ours. I just like the name, said Pola. Zot. Mora poked the air. Zot. Zot, said Pola. It's the perfect name, isn't it? Better than ours. Compare it to ours. Zitlik. Seriously. Imagine being a girl from Zitlik, Pola laughed. At least we're princesses. Even worse, joked Pola. We are princesses from Zitlik. Mora laughed. Let's hope no one ever hears you say that. Just expect them to be weird on Zot. Really weird. Lady Crane, the keeper of the princesses, made her entrance with a flourish, the door to the room swinging open at her approach. She greeted the princesses with a warm smile, addressing them with a courteous, ladies. Lady Crane was a tall, slender woman with sharp features and an air of authority about her. Her duty was to listen to their complaints and then quickly say that such thoughts should never be uttered. Had you heard from the Bronze City yet? said Lady Crane. Mora poked her communication goggles, checking if there were any fresh dispatches sent her way. Nothing. Lady Crane, said Pola, crossing her legs. These moon people, are they strange? Well, yes, said Lady Crane, but we are too, are we not? You could do with a little tolerance for eccentricity, said Mora to Pola. I am weird, I think, said Pola, or weird enough that planet people avoid me once they know I'm from a moon. There's Zitlik weird and Zot weird. Let's make a distinction, Mora said. JC? said Lady Crane, twisting her face, looking sideways. Damn. She coughed into her fist, her bracelet jingling. JC blinked up, and a very loud shuddering came from within her like a fan gone way, way overdrive. l l, -l, -l lady Crane. The bot got burning hot to the touch. The moon folk of Zot are the indigenous folk, din indigenous folk of Zot, not a part of its prime civilization of domes. As Zot joins the nexus of planets, there is a question of what will happen to the indigenous moon, moon folk. Lady Crane raised an empty glass. I really just wanted a drink, but thanks for that information. She jumped, JC, she thumped JC, but this caused the android to start making really weird noises. With another thump on her back, the noises stopped. Why is this alliance so controversial, said Pola. Because of how the Zot government treated their indigenous moon folk, said Lady Crane, which is why I'm here to ensure you act strictly in accordance with Nexus customs. You see, there are about six etiquettes here at once, which all must be followed. A single act out of turn shall jeopardize about ten different alliances. You, Princess Mora, have been chosen as the diplomat of Zitlik. I promise I shall not do a thing without your permission, Lady Crane, said Mora. Pola, are you listening? Huh? Yes, sure. Uh, whatever. The strictest, the strictest obedience on this journey is required, said the Lady Crane to both of them. There is fun and there is Zot, and the two should not converge. Uh, very serious, groaned Mora. Meanwhile, stay strictly among the royals of Zot and do not leave their sides. Prince Fidge has much he wishes to share with you. Suddenly, Mora's communication goggles lit up. Pola squeezed a look alongside her. Both princesses saw the face of Prince Fidge. Pola burst out laughing. Mora blushed. He's not so bad, said Pola. He's just a bit of a rigid geek, that's all. Mora laughed. The Pola principle. The first reaction Pola has is always the right reaction. Don't have too much fun, said Lady Crane. You're going to be marrying him after all. Mora looked at her sideways. If I don't? Lady Crane took a drink. Then you ruin everything. The door shot open. Lady Crane went off the ship. JC followed her as the door was shut and the robot bounced into the door over and over again, trying to leave. Lady Crane, shouted Mora through the door. Can Pola marry him instead? 